What do we really know about the apparitions at Garabandal? A lot of you will have seen uh, documentaries about the apparitions and films and will have read books on the apparitions and probably think that we know quite a lot. But there are still so many unanswered questions. And it's one of the things that really fascinates me about these apparitions. I've been to Garabandal twice now and the last time that I went to Garabandal, many new questions were raised in my mind because I spent quite a long time speaking with one of Marie Loli's sisters, Amalia. You'll know her if you've been to Garabandal. Uh, she owns the, the inn there named after her, Posada Amalia. And as I was speaking with Amalia, I realized how little we really know about the apparitions at Garabandal and how our understanding of the apparitions is viewed through a particular lens. Well, at least this was according to Amalia. One of the things Amalia brought to my attention was that an awful lot of our information about Garabandal, about the messages, about locutions, um, about future events, a warning, miracle, chastisement, a lot of it comes through uh, the mouthpiece of Conchita. A lot of things come uh, through Conchita. And Amalia, for whatever reason, she seemed to think that, that this was actually incorrect. In her view, in her view, it's a mistake to see Conchita alone as a principal seer of Garabandal, the principal message giver of Garabandal. And that's that's really interesting. And I, I and I've I've had even more questions to ask Amalia for when I return next time. Um so one of the questions I would like to ask her is where were the other children the day of the second message? None of the accounts of the second message mention that the other children were there. Were they there at that point in 1965? Were they interested in what was going on? Had they began to have doubts at that point? Were they annoyed with Conchita taking the limelight? I want to ask her about that, whether she was there, Amalia, because she was quite a little girl at the time of the apparitions. Amalia's view and the view of, of others is that Conchita, because of her her, um, her vocalness during the early years and the fact that she has done the largest number of interviews, um, has kind of defined the phenomena of Garabandal for us, what occurred there, and um, even the the second message, and also the final the, the final apparition of Our Lady. Uh, the personal apparition of Our Lady, where there's also quite a profound message given to the world, where Our Lady reveals uh, herself to be our mother, our personal mother in heaven, uh, which in many ways is a summary of the, the message of Garabandal. Everything is, everything, or the most important, or what seem to be for us the most important aspects, have come through the mouthpiece and the means of of Conchita, but what if, what if this is is a mistake, or what if there's another view? Um, Amalia seemed to think that, for instance, the the normal story goes that after uh, 1962, I think it is, um, only Conchita was still receiving locutions and. Um, Mary, Mary Lowley occasionally had locutions as well. And then by 65, it's just Conchita occasionally having locutions. And she occasionally has a few others later on in life, uh, we're made to understand. But Namalia said that actually, Marie Lowley continued to receive personal apparitions of Our Lady in the house long after 1962. There's one interview. There's one interview with uh, Maximina, the aunt of Conchita, where she um, she ex she responds to the interviewer that Garabandal really was a two-year thing. It was a two-year thing. Um, 
you know, 1961, perhaps going into 63, or maybe even just a year and a two year, yeah, a year and a half to two years. And she she was correcting the interviewer who was trying to say that it was from 61 to 65. Um, but um, Amalia says, no, um, it wasn't a one year, it wasn't a one to two year thing because Marie Lowley continued to have private apparitions of Our Lady within the house and everyone who lived in that house um, saw them. How this squares with the fact that that Mary Lowley also was living the place where they were living was the the tavern was a, was a, was the tavern and, and Mary Lowley was often seen serving behind the bar in those early years and helping out looking after the shop that was also there in as a part of the the tavern and and helping to run the little hotel type thing that they had there. How that all worked out, I don't know, but Amalia was quite insistent that. There were continued apparitions of Our Lady in their house, and there were continued private messages relayed to Marie Lowley. The account that we've received through Maximina, um, she felt was was not helpful and, and was not entirely accurate, and that she felt that Maximina was one of the key uh, persons who was was directing all the attention to Conchita and putting the focus on Conchita. Another really interesting um, claim from Amalia regarding regarding the apparitions of Garabandal and, and, and particularly regarding the chronology of how the miracle warning chastisement is going to, to play out, or rather uh, warning miracle chastisement. One of the really interesting things um, is that Amalia claimed that contrary to some of the later interviews of of Conchita that in actual fact Conchita doesn't know the date of the miracle but that she will be told the date of the miracle in the future it's strange isn't it because we we all have in our mind that that Conchita knows the date of the miracle and she's keeping it quiet and that you know, maybe she'll tell us it. Um, she'll tell us it in the future. Max, but Amalia said Conchita doesn't know the date of the miracle, um, and that and that only only in the future will she receive that date. Who knows? Maybe maybe the future had already had already come to pass, and that's why that's why Conchita knows the date of the miracle. But um, again, again, Amalia was of the view that. Conchita shouldn't be taken as a primary visionary of Garabandal. And this, again, it, it made me start to think, how much do we really know about what went on in Garabandal? There's so much unwritten about the apparitions of Garabandal. One of the really, um, really weird things that, that we don't have, um, the other unwritten thing, is that we're told in one location, and my mind fails me here, whether it is Mary Lowley or whether it's uh, Hacinta, one of the two I remember reading um, also kept a diary during the days of the apparitions. And that has uh, never come to light. In fact, one of the experts of Garabandal on the forums told me that it was Ma that it was Mary Lowley who had the uh, ha who had kept a, a diary and that's kind of what I thought it was and originally we had been told in some of the older books on Garabandal we'd been told that this diary would be released after her death and as we know may God rest her soul Mary Lowley passed away a few years ago now um, but the diary never came to light it's never been published it's never been put online i mean that would be amazing to have this additional uh resource on what happened at garabandal and i bet uh father saavedra would love to have that that diary but maybe there are people that don't want it released maybe it messes up the current narrative around garabandal if you go back in time on the internet and look at uh, some GeoCities pages from uh, from you know 15 years ago, you can have a look on the GeoCities pages about Garabandal. And I did this a little while ago, 
And it's amazing how the narrative, the story of Garabandal has changed. Um, and you can you can see, you know, not into not in not always about the events that occurred in Garabandal, but quite often about prophecies. So if you go back to when John Paul II was alive, the, the time of these GeoCities websites, they're quite sure that John Paul II is the last pope. And then the then the warning is going to happen. But now, because things didn't come to pass, now that's all kind of been um, changed a bit. And people are saying, oh, no, actually, um, in the time of Benedict, we moved into the end of times, uh, right? The end of times, um, not the end time or, or the end of the world, but the end, end of times. Um, and so... And yet, and then actually, I'm sure it's in in one of um, one of Conchita's remarks, is that actually the end of times is defined by the fact that the warning takes place to mark it as the the end of times. That's the the thing that defines it as such. Um, another thing in 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 these GeoCities websites and in some of the um, uh, older books is there's very little emphasis on the uh, astronomical side of the warning and some recent writers and commentators especially there's a Spanish guy on YouTube who speaks loads about this really go into a lot into into um, solar events that are going to accompany the, the warning that seems to me that seems to be a new thing also you go back on the some of the GeoCity sites and they're telling us about uh, Joey Lamangini telling us about his site being restored. I know we, we don't need to go into that now. I mentioned that on, on a previous video about Garabandal. Um, if you're interested in he hearing more of my reflections on, on Garabandal, please let me know. There's a lot we don't know about these apparitions. That's why I certainly support uh, Father, Father Saavedra's uh, request for there to be a third commission into Garabandal. And also, I'd like the the first and the second commission for their writings uh, to be made public, to be to be released, so we can uh, we can read some of the interviews that we don't we don't have at the moment with with the children and some of the people in the village of Garabandal. May God bless you, may the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.